Endometrial cancer is an under-researched uh, disease. Uh, thinking about the fact that endometrial cancer today is the most common gynecologic malignancy, and if you search in clinicaltrials.gov, you find more than 1,500 hits for ovarian cancer as compared to less than 400 for endometrial cancer. So it is uh, under-researched compared to ovarian cancer. Uh, still, we know quite a bit about potential molecular targets. Uh, endometrial cancer seems to be less heterogeneous as compared to ovarian cancer. We have this big group of endometroid endometrial cancers, which have certain molecular characteristics, it seems like. I think it, they can be used to individualize therapy in two ways. Uh, you can use the biomarkers to define high and low risk patients with uh, greater certainty. In that way, you will be able to uh, give full treatment including systemic therapy to the high-risk patients, and you can at the same time avoid over-treatment of the low-risk patients, and then also side effects. When it comes to developing new drugs, there are no uh, targeted therapies presently available in the, for regular clinical use in endometrial cancer. And in that regard, we're behind breast and colorectal cancers, for instance. Um, there are targets that have been defined uh, that have promising results from molecular studies. In particular, uh, it's promising, it may be promising to target FGFR2 mutated tumor samples and tumor samples with activation of PA3 kinase signaling pathway. And, and drugs uh, targeting PA3 kinase signaling, mTOR signaling, uh, drugs from those uh, types of medicines are presently in uh, phase one and two trials. Presently you give, uh, you do a surgical treatment uh, when the patient is diagnosed. Then you try to classify them as high or low risk patients to develop recurrent disease. And uh, basically adjuvant therapy is to give chemotherapy um, to high-risk patients. And you also have radiotherapy that's given to some subgroups of endometrial cancer patients, also defined as high-risk patients. Not really, but uh, it has to be considered experimental. Um, endometrial cancer incidence is supposed to be associated with obesity. So when we have more obese women, uh, more young women will also uh, develop endometrial cancer. And that makes, of course, uh, fertility preserving treatment more relevant for this group as well. But we have no solid data yet, but it's more an experimental thing that has been tried, um, yes.